Walking Length Determination Radiographic Method Hello, now that we have discussed the first step of root canal treatment, axis cavity preparation, we shall move on to the next step, Working Length Determination. Let us imagine a scenario where the root canal length is not recorded properly and is considerably short of the actual length of the canal. What do you think would happen? The bacteria residing at the apex would not get killed and the infection would persist. It may also lead to root canal failure. Similarly, if the length is over-recorded, it could lead to the extrusion of the irrigants and other substances, causing a symptomatic foreign body reaction. Thus, knowing the appropriate length of the root canal is necessary to carry out the cleaning, shaping and later filling of the canal. With this understanding, let's now define working length. It is the distance from a coronal reference point to the point at which canal preparation and obturation should terminate. This is usually the apical terminus of the root canal, also called the apical constriction or minor diameter. Pop quiz Ideally, the canal preparation should extend apical to the cementodentinal junction, or CDJ. As we learnt, the CDJ does not commonly coincide with the apical constriction and is short. Thus, it is advised to terminate the instrumentation and obturation within 0.5 to 1 mm short of the radiographic apex. With this, let us look at the different methods to determine working length. These can be classified as radiographic methods, non-radiographic methods, and by using electronic apex locators. Today we shall discuss the most common and recommended radiographic method, the Ingalls technique. To accurately measure the working length using this method, firstly you should know the average length of the tooth. To prevent the forcing of debris or bacteria into the periradicular tissues. Secondly, the instrument must be pre curved by bending the blade using a gauze sponge to accommodate the canal curvature. Thirdly, you must have a stable occlusal reference point such as the incisal edges for the anteriors as the cuspal tips for the posteriors. Let's clinically correlate. At times, we reduce the tooth out of occlusion to prevent trauma or tooth fracture mid-treatment. This step of occlusal reduction should be done before we finalize the working length so that there is no discrepancy once we start with the cleaning and shaping later. Fourthly, the silicone stopper in the file should be set according to the reference point to maintain the correct working length. Did you know these stoppers are autoclavable? so you don't need to remove them from files before autoclaving. With these clinical prerequisites, let us dive into the clinical part of Ingalls technique. You should insert exploratory instruments like number 6, 8 or 10 K files, which are flexible enough to fit into finer and tortuous canals through reaming action to avoid obstruction and debris, and the rubber stopper is adjusted. After you remove the file, you must look out for any curvatures or anatomical anomalies that were not visible in the radiograph. After this, refer to the original radiograph to measure and estimate the working length of the tooth from the occlusal surface to the tooth apex. Keep the estimated working length 1 mm short of the length of the tooth as measured on the radiograph. Why do you think this is done? This is done to compensate for any distortion that may have occurred while taking the radiograph. Before taking the working length x-ray, you should do the pre-coronal enlargement or orifice enlargement using Gates Glidden drills or orifice openers. Then again, place the file and take a working length radiograph to compare the instrument's position with the measured depth. Adjust the exact working length by altering the length of insertion so that the tip is 0.5 to 1 mm short of the radiographic root apex. 
If any change is felt during tactile examination, then a radiograph must be taken to assess the canals and the files need to be adjusted accordingly. At times, you might need to take two working length determination radiographs, one at normal angulation and another at around 20 degrees mesial or distal horizontal angulation, allowing better visualization of root canals. Pop quiz. Do you remember observing radiolucency apically near the root apex in a decayed tooth? If this phenomenon of periapical bone resorption happens, the working length is reduced by 1.5 mm of the radiographic apex, as the apical constriction would have been resorbed. Let's consider another example, where the root resorption is observed apically. In such cases, an apical stop should be created short of the radiographic apex so that over-instrumentation and overfilling can be avoided. To achieve this, the working length is kept 2 mm short of the radiographic apex. These modifications were given by Wine and hence called Wine's modification. Pop quiz Before we conclude, let's go through the important points. Working length, the distance from a coronal reference point to the point at which canal preparation and obturation should terminate, which is usually the apical terminus of the root canal. Methods of working length determination, radiographic methods, non-radiographic methods, electronic apex locators, the Ingalls method, most used method in radiographic methods, most recommended method, amalgamation of electronic apex locators and radiographic methods. Ingalls method, the file is always placed 0.5 to 1 mm short of the radiographic apex. Wines modifications, periapical bone resorption, 1.5 mm short of the radiographic apex. Apical root resorption, 2 mm short of the radiographic apex. Aren't you curious to find out how we go about determining the root canal length without radiographs? For that, you must stay tuned for another session. We hope you had fun learning with us. Think out of the box. Explore more such videos on our website.